Good afternoon, Mets fans, and welcome to a Tuesday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and it is February 25th, and in just a few minutes, the Mets will kick off their fourth spring training game today against the Detroit Tigers. On the mound for the Mets will be Michael Waka. I'm going to talk a little bit about Mr. Waka uh, on today's show. I um, also want to talk a little bit about uh, Mr. Tim Tebow on today's show, who we got to see this past weekend in the Orange and Blue. So I'm going to do that uh, in just a moment on today's show. So I am uh, pulling out of Wawa right now, my, my lunch spot. Um, and this is the second day in a row that I've recorded in the afternoon as opposed to in the morning. This is not going to become a habit. Um, although in the, uh, in the summer and, and pretty soon actually, I guess in two weeks when we change the clocks uh, and it's a little bit lighter uh, in the evening, there's a very good chance I might be talking on my way home from work as, a pay, as opposed to on my way into work. But logistics aside, um, I, I am back for, uh, for today. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about our uh, our newly signed, or the Mets' newly signed, um, starting pitching prospect. Although he's not a prospect in the traditional sense of the word, but he is a prospect in that he'd like to be considered for the rotation. So that would be Michael Waka. Um, Waka's on the mound today, as I said, against the Detroit Tigers. Uh, Mets are on the road uh, for today's game. Did not get a chance to look at the lineups, and I didn't even get a chance to see whether or not the game was televised or... Uh, would be on the radio, but um, regardless, uh, it will be Waka's turn to pitch, I assume, one inning today um, for the Mets. Waka's an interesting case um, as far as his um, his merits as a starting pitcher because he's, of course, got the, a little bit of a pedigree with his career with St. Louis. Um, he is a uh, in, I don't want to say he's injury prone, but he's been injured uh, a, a lot in his career. Um, he's been sort of up and down, good and bad. And I, I don't know that anything other than his contract um, puts him in position to start the season as a member of the rotation over Stephen Matz. Um, I, I know that there was some uh, overreaction on Mets Twitter about Matz's home run. I talked about this yesterday, that, uh, that Matz gave up in his inning of work on, uh, on Saturday or Sunday, whatever day it was. Um, but it doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't matter. Um, the, 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 this, the, the whole sort of spring training thing is that we need to stop paying attention to the minutia of stats and look at it more of the, these guys are continuing to prepare for the season. That's, that's what this is. And so for, from that standpoint, it does make it kind of hard to, um, to judge or evaluate whether a player, uh, whether a player's performance in the spring, um, should grant them a spot on an opening day roster in, in one capacity or another. Um, that being said, uh, it is, it is imperative for Waka to, uh, to have a good outing today, um, because if he doesn't wind up in the rotation, which is, again, my suspicion, but if he doesn't wind up there, he is definitely going to be a candidate to be the long man out of the bullpen. And, I mean, historically, he hasn't shown much prowess for that. His numbers aren't great uh, as a reliever. But it, it might be different if he's able to focus and dedicate his attention um, on being a relief pitcher as opposed to being someone who just kind of gets stuck there. So I, I think the important part to this discussion is that the Mets do need to sort of uh, uh, define the role that Waka will play and, frankly, that Mats will play as well. And they need to do that sooner rather than later so that Mats can formally prepare to be a starter and continue to, to those preparations and that Waka can get himself into the mindset of, I'm not a starter. I'm a reliever, and that, that's I, I think that's the most important part. So I, I again, I don't think it matters how well he does, Waka does that is, um, in his start today and in, in his spring training performances. Um, he's going to be a, a relief pitcher, and I think it's important that the Mets convey that to him sooner rather than later. 
Um, one other pitcher that, to, that I want to sort of uh, mention here is Seth Lugo, who in, in the past has found himself in this I want to be a starter role um, more times than I think he would like. Um, you know, there's, there's, I, I don't want to call Michael Walker the next Seth Lugo. I'm not trying to do that by any means. Um, but there is something to be said for giving a guy um, the, the, the role that they're going to be playing and letting that guy know this is, I know you want to be a starter, but you're too valuable to us as a reliever or your, your value to us is out of the bullpen, not as a starter. Uh, we will consider you as a, as a spot start option when and if the need arises, but you know, you're not going to be the starter. That's the conversation to have with, with Waka. I'm kind of going in the other direction with Seth Lugo. Um, judging by numbers alone, Seth Lugo was the best reliever out of the Mets bullpen. Um, judging by the actual performance, Seth Lugo was the best reliever coming out of the Mets bullpen last year. And where I'm going with this is maybe as a reward to Seth Lugo, it would be nice if the Mets said, you know what, Seth, um, you, we know you want to be a starter, but you are so damn good as a relief pitcher. We're going to name you the closer out of the gate as the you know opening day closer. That is something the Mets could theoretically do with with Edwin Diaz waiting in the wings um, and, and sort of maybe splitting that role with Seth Lugo because we know Lugo can't go back-to-back days, right? That's, that's always been the asterisk next to him not being the closer because he's sort of limited to the, the number of uh, consecutive outings he's able to throw in. But if you sort of, again, define that role with him, uh, with Diaz as well, Knowing that you have uh, Dellen Betances as as a, another option as a closer in, in, in a pinch, um, I do think there's a way for the Mets to sort of mix and match these relief pitchers um, and and kind of give Lugo a little chip, a little reward for the phenomenal season he, he uh, put forth in, in 2019. So, um, finally, thing I want to talk about is uh, Mr. Tim Tebow. Um, I'm, I'm on record. I'm not the biggest Tebow fan. I don't have a good reason to not be the biggest Tebow fan. I kind of feel like I don't like him because he's a celebrity, if that makes any sense. You know, like in the Kardashian vein, I, I, I just feel like Tebow is, um, is this like polarizing figure who gets more attention than he should. And maybe that's my problem with him. But that being said, and, and regardless, um, I'm I'm actually not in the camp of um, Tim Tebow shouldn't be uh, it, taking up a roster spot for uh, for the Mets. I don't believe that uh, to be true. I don't think he's stealing a spot from somebody. Uh, I don't think the Mets have a whole lot of outfield depth to uh, to be sort of hiding behind Tebow or, or have Tebow being sort of responsible for blocking their development. Uh, the Mets just don't have the outfield depth right now. So I, I just wanted to sort of throw that out there as far as Tebow goes. Um, the guy is uh, is trying his very best to be a capable um, baseball player. I don't know that he'll ever be that, <laughs> um, but he's, he's trying and that's more than we can say for a lot of people. So uh, before we get all pissy about Tebow and, and being on the field and whatever, um, let's just remember the fact that, that this guy is a big name. And I said he's a celebrity, right? And there's there's drawing power that comes along with that. And I, I, I think at the end of the day, unfortunately, um, no matter how poorly he performs, that drawing power is going to keep him in the orange and blue in, in, in some level in the minor leagues. Uh, because he, he draws and he sells a ton of jerseys and that's, look, this is a business, you know, so, uh, but I don't care. I'm not, I'm not offended by it. I'm not upset about it. It is what it is. Um, good for Tebow, you know, Godspeed, man. I hope he, I hope he figures something out. And, uh, he, he sticks around, whatever. So that's going to wrap it up for today. Um, not a whole lot of substance on this show. Uh, that's the, the downside to getting past like the first day of spring training. Um, you start to realize that these games are entirely meaningless. Uh, they're, they're not that much fun to talk about. The regulars are only playing an inning or two. Starting pitchers are only going an inning. Uh, we're, we're seeing, you know, nine guys 
uh, at, on the field that we were never going to see again, likely. But um, the, the spring training continues, and I'll, I'll be back to talk about it at some point. It won't be tomorrow. I'm out of town again um, the rest of this week. I, I might come back on Friday, depending on um, any news that might break or anything that's worth talking about between now and then. Um, but uh, I'll, uh, if not Friday, I will definitely be back on Monday uh, to catch up on what I missed with Grapefruit League Baseball and the New York Mets. So until then, um, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. You can follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. That's M-I-S-T-E-R underscore M-E-T. And as always, let's go Mets.